All right, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks, Carly, for organizing this. Um, I'm really looking forward to coming to more of these meetups because I think Big Chain is definitely a very interesting technology, so I'm looking forward to seeing how other people are using it. Um, with that being said, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Authentic, uh, what, what we're doing, what the problem is that we're trying to solve, uh, how we're trying to solve it, and I guess more importantly for this group, um, why we're using Big Chain DB and why we think it's going to be one of the core facets of our technology. So to start off with, what is Authentic? Uh, essentially, it's a trusted identity verification service and privacy tool. So what does that mean? Uh, essentially, what we're offering users is a platform where you can verify your identity uh, and then use this to prove to any sort of peer-to-peer -peer marketplace or fintech that you are who you say you are. Uh, you might have heard of something like called KYC. Uh, this stands for Know Your Customer, and this is like a typical government regulation which you'll find uh, with financial institutions. For example, um, if you're a bank or a stock trading account or a gambling website, anything that deals with money, you have to uh, fulfill a certain amount of due diligence to ascertain a customer's identity. Uh, the most common way to do this in Germany is that you go down to a bank branch and prove to the person that you are who you say you are. Um, we want to offer a platform which simplifies this process, both for peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces and fintechs. Um, now, before I get into uh, how we do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Thor, like Charlie said. I'm the lead backend developer at Authentic. I've been working for about six or seven months at Authentic, joined uh, around last June. Uh, before that, I was working for, a, I worked for a couple years at a bank. And uh, up until most recently, I was working for a company called Go Euro, which is a startup here in Berlin, which does a travel search engine where you can purchase tickets and uh, find sort of best train bus flight. Um, so in my work experience, I've actually seen uh, firsthand a need for something like Authentic. Uh, anyone who's ever worked with credit card transactions, you might have seen, uh, you might have had to think about credit card fraud. And if you don't, you get burned, right? So uh, now credit card fraud is an interesting thing because there's actually a lot of industry leaders in credit card fraud. For example, uh, Braintree, where you can collect troves of uh, information from various different credit card transactions and detect certain patterns and say, okay, this uh, credit card is most likely stolen. Um, my most favorite uh, statistic from these guys are, uh, I think it's that uh, two tanks of gas and a pair of shoes. Uh, if, if those are the last three transactions on a credit card, 90% of the time it's a stolen credit card. Uh, I don't know why, but um, apparently that's some sort of pattern that we can detect. So with that being said, you have, um, so with credit card transactions, uh, this, I wouldn't call it a solved problem, but it's definitely something where there are industry players. But if you have, for example, a dating website or something like Vegas, where you don't necessarily need a credit card, how do you determine if it's a fraudulent person behind the transaction? And that's um, sort of the core of what we're trying to do. So I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, my own uh, my own personal experience dealing with these kinds of things. Uh, so about two and a half or three years ago, I moved to Berlin. And if any of you have flats here, you know how hard it is to find a find a place to place to live. So I spent about a few months looking on Vega Gesuch, the Mobilen Scout, the all these all these players, um, sending loads of different uh, emails to all these different uh, ads until I got a nice email from this guy named Leon. Um, who just so happened to be living in London, but had a really nice place. It was really convenient for me. It was right next to the office, good price. Uh, in my naivety, I was very eager to trust it. Um, so we had a couple of back and forths until we got to this, where he was asking me to transfer about 1,100 euros to some company called U-Ship. Uh, they would then hold the money and send me the keys. I uh, looked into U-Ship, it turns out this is not really what they do, and I kind of set up a, set up a few, set up a few warning, uh, warning notes. So I sent one more email, a um, bit childish, but I told him I was living in North Korea, when my name was Michael Jordan, and then I got a nice email back saying that in his eyes I'm a chicken waiting to be eaten, and he uh, doesn't have time for me, and certainly I didn't have time for him either. Uh, so. Um, to their credit, uh, to their credit, I reported the ad to, um, I think it was Immobilian Scout. I reported it. It was taken down almost immediately. 
Um, but about two, three days later, the same advertisement was back up under a different name, under a different email. So the, it's, it's a very uphill battle for some of these people to deal with uh, fake users, especially when you're having these uh, professional sort of con artists that have Excel spreadsheets with thousands of fake emails that they have ready, and they'll just jump to the next one like that. Um, another example I want to share, and then I'll get into, the, into what we're doing. Um, just before I joined Authentic, and this is actually kind of what tuned me into uh, that Authentic is a good idea, I purchased a domain name for myself um, off uh, something called Snap Names, which is like a domain auction website. Um, made the bid, got, everything went through, it was fine. Uh, then about three or four days later, I got an email from their support team saying they wanted to verify my identity. Uh, the way they wanted to do this was that they had placed two temporary hold charges on my credit card and were asking me to log into my account and see exactly the values that were uh, charged and then I would report to them what it was and that this is how they wanted to know who I, who I was. Um, so it's actually a fairly novel idea. I definitely hadn't heard of it before. Um, but there's a few problems with this. So one is I logged into my Commerce Bank account and I couldn't find the hold charges. So I ended up having to call customer service and they said, oh yeah, the UI doesn't show hold charges, we only show real charges. Um, then they rerouted me to a few different people because not everyone could see all your financial data. So it took about 45 minutes to an hour until someone was finally able to tell me exactly how much had been put on hold and then I was able to tell snap names and they said, okay, yeah, we confirm that you're a real person. Um, the other problem with this, as you guys know, you can easily buy stolen credit card details and prepaid credit cards are uh, becoming more and more common in there. You can just put whatever name you want. So while, again, I would say this is a novel idea, it's not, it's not perfect. And this is kind of what we want to solve. Um, so as a general introduction about us, so what is it that we're doing? We offer you a, or a digital biometric passport. So that's an authentic ID that you get issued after we've gone through these processes of verifying our identity. Um, so we're eliminating this sort of anonymity which exists on the internet, which is uh, definitely one of the big pros of the internet, but terrible when you want to deal with financial transactions or any other thing where you don't want this anonymity. Um, but the other facet of it is we also have to ensure privacy, which is what we're doing, and by having uh, the user control his or our information, which I'll get into a little bit later. So how do you get a digital biometric passport? Um, so we have a verification process which takes under 60 seconds. Um, in the worst cases, it's under 60 seconds. Best cases, even less. Um, and the steps are quite straightforward. So when you have the app, the Android app, we don't have an iOS app yet. So if any of you are iOS developers or are interested, talk to me afterwards. Um, but you open your Android app. The first thing you do is you take a selfie. Now, when you take the selfie, we have Sort of, um, we have a few different government grade algorithms which can do some, ana some analysis, on the analysis on the face and see if it's a real face or if it's a static image because your face actually makes about 100 different changes in a matter of milliseconds which we can detect. Um, the next step is you uh, scan your ID. Uh, in our case it's a passport. So uh, the good thing about passports is they're very streamlined across countries, but we're going to integrate other different government issued IDs. But for now, you take a scan of your passport, and we pull all the relevant information, like your photo, uh, the date of birth, your name. And the next step is we take, we do um, facial comparison between the selfie that you took and the photo which is on your passport. So using this, we can ascertain that the person that took the selfie and the person in the passport is definitely the same person. There's about like, 100 different points of uh, identity within your face which make your face completely unique. Um, so this, along with a few other different security measures that we do, like social footprint, geolocation, uh, geolocation of the photo, some black magic, um, we, if everything checks out, you get issued this digital ID which I mentioned. And this is stored on the blockchain. Um, so once you're issued this digital ID, you can take it to any sort of peer-to-peer uh, -peer marketplace, fintech, whoever wants to support Authentic, and all you have to do is scan a QR code since it's on your phone, um, and they'll know this is a real person according to their government issued ID. This is who they say that. 
Um, so I mentioned that we stored the ID on the blockchain. So uh, why do we need a blockchain? Well, for one, it's uh, secure. It's a very secure technology. It's very um, trusted. It also offers us a distributed storage. So this means that uh, we don't have governance over the data. It's you that has the governance over the data, and that's something we want to emphasize. Um, and it's decentralized control, because we don't want just one MySQL database with, where everything is uh, stored and then someone can hack and then does a rainbow table look up to find the encryption key. Uh, for us, everything is uniquely encrypted. Uh, on your phone is where your private key is stored. Only you have access to your private key. Every private key is unique. Um, so how do we use IPDB or Big Chain DB? Um, as a developer, I like just drawing up a little bit of an architecture diagram. Um, we have, at the moment, we have a pretty uh, professional setup. Uh, we host everything on AWS. We have two uh, failover backends, which are being load balanced. Um, like I mentioned here, the private key. So we don't have uh, that gets sent over. We have um, we talk to basically our user service, which is the core layer which interacts with BigchainDB over uh, RabbitMQ. Um, the reason we decided to break it up like this is it offers us a bit of uh, flexibility when it comes to scaling. So one of the problems that um, we've discussed in our team is that each time we would integrate a new customer, let's say, for example, Airbnb, we can anticipate a certain spike in new users. So by having something like this, we can then horizontally scale, for example, the user service if we detect that there's going to be a lot of load on creating new users, and then scale it back down once the load is uh, passed. Um, and then we have also a Redis cluster if we need to do some sort of interaction between the, you know, between the API layer and the user service. Um, as far as tech stack goes, the backend is completely Java-based. Our user service is based in Python. Since you guys know, the Bitcoin driver is available in Python, so we decided to keep it in Python in the user service. Um, we'll wrap it in queue in the middle to talk. So maybe a little bit why we love IPAB. Well, uh, first and foremost, it's fast and scalable. Um, magnitude is faster than any other blockchain uh, solution we use, um, or any other blockchain solution that is out there. Um, just taking something like Bitcoin, for example, I think the transactions can take sometimes up to many minutes. Whereas in our initial testing with uh, Bitchain, it's, it's less than a second to create the true users. Um, so we're very happy with how fast everything is. Um, it's also very secure. And the, we also really appreciate the simplicity it offers. So none of us at Authentic really need to be blockchain experts, um, which is what I thought initially when our CTO was talking about, oh yeah, we're gonna, enter, we're gonna use blockchain on there. I need to read about blockchain. But it actually offers this sort of abstracts the sort of complexities out, which I really appreciate. Um, and it has like, a, yeah, talking over with uh, just over an API. And uh, last but not least, uh, it's a great team. Um, as a, uh, I can say for myself, uh, they've been uh, very gracious answering any of our questions, letting us come to the office and bug them. So it's been a really uh, nice integration of. Compared to other companies that I've worked with in the past, it's, it's been uh, really pleasant. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about blockchain. I just want to talk about, I guess, a little bit, I guess, on the um, sort of industries that we're focusing on. So these are the four main sort of industry players that we foresee would be interested in authentic. So I mentioned before the peer-to-peer uh, -peer marketplaces, adult dating services. So numbers one and three are interesting because these are industries where KYC is not mandatory by any sort of government body. Um, but it's something that if you do it, it sets you apart from others in your, in your field. And uh, it's not, it might not be done at the moment because it's done because there's no real good way, like I mentioned before, with um, snap names. The only method they have is by charging to your credit card. But what we want to do is we want to offer a very simple way for them to do this sort of ID verification. Um, so two and four are um, industries, so fintech, betting, and gaming websites are industries where KYC is actually mandatory by uh, government bodies. So the know your customer that I was talking about. And this is a place where we feel that Authentic can actually step in and simplify the process. So if you're a bank, 
Now, KYC goes a little bit deeper than just knowing who you are and knowing that you are who you say you are, but it's the core behind KYC. And by removing this sort of manual check, which can cost upwards of 50 euros per customer, uh, we think we can simplify the process so that these, um, these bank employees can focus on more things like AML, anti-money laundering, background checks, which also need to be verified. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about our users. Um, yeah, so I think that, that wraps up my slides. Um, so just to recap, uh, we don't really store any sort of sensitive information like I got into before. Uh, you create this sort of digital ID, which is created on the blockchain. Uh, the user owns their information and has complete control over what information is shared to others. So what we mean by this is, uh, I mentioned before, if you want to go, for example, to a dating website, or yeah, like a dating website which wants to verify your age, you have complete control over what you want to share with that site. So you might not want to share your name or anything, but they just want to know that you're over 18. So they might, so similar to Facebook permissions, when you click the authentic verify button, you'll get a little pop-up which says, wants to know, are you 18 plus? You scan the QR code uh, uh, using your app, and they'll know that you are a real person, you are who you say you are, you are over 18. Um, so yeah, essentially what we do is, we, so at our core, what we do is we verify and authenticate your identity and enable you to verify the information to any sort of online service that you wish um, without telling any, or showing anyone your information. So yeah, that's, um, that's it about the product. Um, like I mentioned before, we are hiring. So if any of you are developers, designers, business people, salespeople, marketing, uh, talk to me afterwards, send me an email. My email is uh, thor at authentic.com. We'd be happy to talk to you. Also, if you are interested in using the service, we are looking for beta clients at the moment. Um, and we have an awesome team behind us. So I mentioned myself, obviously I'm awesome. Uh, <laughs> but we also have a great, um, our CEO, very experienced, has exited two startups by now. Uh, our CTO uh, sold a startup to Samsung, also worked at Google specializing in security. And we also, one of our senior advisors is a guy named Runat, who's also the dad of the CEO. And he's one of the few people in the world, maybe the only person in the world, to uh, have integrated electronic IDs for governments uh, in two different countries, I think Norway and Iceland. Um, so we have a lot of experience. We really want to do this right. So yeah, that's, that's it for me. Great.